Greetings Lux Lovers! Welcome or welcome back. I've shared on this channel that I'm a big fan of quiet luxury. We've been hearing a lot about the brand Brunello Cuccinelli as an emblem of this trend. And then I thought to myself that I don't know anyone who's bought anything from them. So I decided to do some research and go to my local boutique to see what it's all about and take you with me. So first I'll share some clips of my initial walkthrough and then I'll talk about the pieces I tried on and give you my take. Brunello Cuccinelli is an Italian luxury brand created in the 70s, mostly known for its cashmere. Now the 70s, that's a fairly new luxury brand in the grand scheme of things. I can't really speak for the men's line, but I noticed the distinctive feature for the women's line and that was everything is sparkly. In terms of the price, the brand is extremely pricey. True ready to wear. I feel like it's kind of on par, maybe a little less than Hermes ready to wear, which I'm more used to. Probably slightly lower, but it seemed to be a little higher than say like a Loro Piana. And yes, everything was extremely well made but many, 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 many things had sequins, which to me personally is just a turn off. As a fashion introvert, as I sometimes call it, I'd rather not be sparkly. The SAA there, who helped me out, explained to me that the brand's main differentiator for many of its items is something called Monili, or Monili, I'm not really sure of the Italian pronunciation, but basically it will always remind me of the name of the 80s band Milli Vanilli. But Monili is pretty much like brass beaded trim. And this is the dead giveaway that you're looking at a Brunello Cuccinelli piece. So now you know, so you can be part of the if you know you know crowd. So once I realized that this Monoly was the brand's shtick, then I could get into it. I told the essay that my aesthetic is more casual and that I was shopping for an upcoming summer trip. And I'll share the items that he pulled for me. Also, the fitting rooms were super gorgeous. And you'll also see a few bags that I pulled for myself, which I'll discuss later. First, I tried on this turtleneck t-shirt. And this was about $750. I believe it was just like a, a cotton stretch. I actually really loved it, and I thought it was really versatile. It had a zip neck in the back for a snugger fit around the neck, so you're not trying to like fit your head through the small um, turtleneck. It had the monolay detail on the front pocket, kind of coming down in a V. I really like the fact that it had really slim sleeves, but I'm not sure how it's supposed to fit because the model on the website um, had it more of a looser fit. But as you can see, the one I tried on was like actually pretty fitted. And I think this was a small or an extra small. I thought it was a really nice transitional piece. And you'll see throughout the rest of the pictures, I wore it with all of the items that I tried because the sales associate was kind of coming in and out, so I had it as this base layer. I'm actually considering going back to get it, but I didn't want to make a rash decision that day considering I was like just going into the store on a whim. But the, it was super, super soft, very comfortable, and I liked the fact that it, was, it could be both warm, but also layered. And because I like long button-down shirts, which I told the SA, he brought me this, and it's the striped twill shirt with monoly. This is almost $2,000 and it was definitely a no because to me the, the sparkle on the side was just like too much and the length was actually just awkward because it wasn't long but it was like waist height. So if you're into that, you might like this. But um, also the, the fabric was really nice and light. I have to give it to them. That twill is, is like paper thin but very well made. But I passed on it because it reminded me of Edward Scissorhands. Next was this very plain striped sweater with shiny cuffs. Now this one is almost $3,000 and I'm not sure if you can see it in the picture, but I'll show a little close up here 
the monolay detail was on the cuffs, so it did have that shiny element to it. To me, this is definitely not worth the hefty price tag of the brand because it could so easily be duped and no one's gonna be you know, that close to you um, looking at the monolay. This next item has a very funny name and they call it the Crispy Silk Vest with Dazzling Crocodile Embroidery. This was definitely a cool piece, um, but kind of at this point unrealistic for me for almost $5,000. Now a feature that I do love about this brand that I saw in various elements across handbags and ready to wear, including this vest, was it has this croc inspired embroidery. I love croc, croc embossed, croc inspired. And I do like the fact that you could get this croc effect on fabric and even handbags and not have to really hurt the animal. So I, I kind of dug that design element from the brand. I also liked that it had a zip top and zip from the bottom and the sizing actually worked well for my torso so it I thought it, it fit well but on the downside it was just covered in clear sequins like just a, a sheath of clear sequins on on the fabric and that was definitely not for me I wouldn't even get it because you know to me that would be hard to maintain and I'm not trying to be sparkly like that in the light if I'm outside. But on the model, it looks beautifully styled. It was, it was just like a nice flashy piece. If you're into that, I love the croc embroidery, but the sequins just kind of killed it and it was at a very high price point. But something that you really couldn't find a replica of anywhere. The next item I tried was this black knit hooded sweater. Now this was also pretty pricey at about $2,400, $2,300, $2,400, but it was a surprise to me in that it was kind of like a contemporary looking piece. Now it wasn't even cashmere, but it was just a cotton hoodie that was cropped, so it kind of came up to my, like just under my bust. and. It just seemed very out of place for what we think of as like this old money aesthetic. It actually seemed very modern and it had little monolay trim where the little um, drawstrings come out of. But to me, this just really isn't justifiable. And in, my, in terms of my own aesthetic, it's definitely way too trendy, but good for them for, for kind of going out and trying a more youthful cropped look. And then the essay through this Hail Mary pass. <laughs> he brought me this linen net stripes cardigan in the color military. It was way too shiny. Even the fibers had reflective bits, and if I recall, it had sequins as well. And it just definitely wasn't my aesthetic. I did like that, that green color though, and I liked the fact that it had that netting weave because it was a good transitional piece. Like if you're walking on the beach and it's kind of breezy, you have coverage, but then it let the air circulate. So I definitely get it, but way too shiny, um, very expensive at about uh, $2,200. And this is like one of the cheaper price points. When I looked at the cleaning instructions, they're not even talking about dry cleaning at, at this echelon. They're saying that cleaning is wet cleaning at a specialist cleaners only. And guys, I don't even know what that means, but if you're a step above dry cleaning and not even talking about just putting it in the washer, I'm out. But now let's talk about the bags. Admittedly, I knew nothing of their line of bags, but I did really enjoy trying them on. Summer's here and I'm kind of feeling a little itchy about getting a nice summer raffia bag. A lot of people are talking about them. So I paid special attention to those types of bags. I try this one on and it's called their Raffia Shopper Bag. Apparently this is a very kind of iconic shape for them, this big large shopper size, and they do it in different types of fabrics and this just happens to be the Raffia one. Now even though I have my eyes on a Raffia bag, I'm a little skeptical of them because in my mind if water hits the Raffia, it's a goner. Maybe I'm mistaken, maybe you guys can let me know if you ever got your Raffia bags wet, but to me, I'm just very nervous about the prospects of one. But then again, they're also so festive and I love the look. This bag is in that larger size and it's more of like a brown color than a straw color, if that makes sense, which Raffia kind of in my mind seems to be a little lighter. But this was so awesomely smushy 
and you could tell it was like a very tight weave but it was tight but smooshy at the same time which I really appreciated. Another feature that I really loved about their bags they all seem to use magnetic closures which I thought was awesome and the magnets were like very satisfying when they came together and pulled apart they were really well sewn in it seemed and it kind of added to that no logo aesthetic because there was no hardware for closures and stuff. The next bag that I tried on was this Raffia shoulder bag. It had a removable adjustable strap which was really nice and so that it could be held only as a clutch. There was no logos anywhere uh, per the whole quiet luxury trend but it just really wasn't my style. It kind of fit oddly in terms of size on my body and I'll show that here. And the one I tried on looked blue, but on the website it said, you know, black or, or the natural color. So I'm not really sure um, what color I was looking at. It was nice, but not for me. Now this next bag is the one that stole my heart. It's the Raffia bucket bag. And it just checked so many boxes. The bucket bag is again, one of those styles that they have across different types of materials. But the Raffia to me, um, just stole the show. It is a great casual medium sized bag and it, will, it would hold a lot of things like your wallet, sunglasses, maybe a shawl. So it had some room in there which was really nice. And it had that gorgeous slouchiness to it with the top handle which actually was not removable with an adjustable detachable crossbody strap and an internal leather pouch which was really nice. I should note that the monoly is across the top handle, again, that you can't take off. But now that I think about it as a feature of the brand, I'm okay with it. Whereas before, I kind of didn't understand why it had that like shiny detail on it. But I'm getting used to it. I'm warming up to it. I also love the fact that it had the drawstrings on the side so that you could help cinch it in. And it had that very satisfying magnetic closure. It's interesting that they chose a gunmetal hardware. I'm hoping that over time it wouldn't chip. I wouldn't expect from such a premium brand that they would use that type of hardware that would, you know, chip away. But it's a risk that you might have to take if you don't have much experience with the brand. My only other hesitation is the leather crossbody strap. It seemed to me that it was really treated that it gave me pause. And granted, I'm used to my Hermes leather straps. Hermes leather feels like it just came straight from the calf. So it just feels like you're feeling some true, true leather. But these straps were interesting in that it wasn't that it was coated, but it was almost that it could be mistaken for synthetic, which I hate to even say, but it could just be that I'm not used to their leathers versus Hermes leathers. So it's just a learning curve. But I guess if I really had an issue with a strap, I could put a totally different crossbody strap on it, but that's like defeats the purpose. So it's something I would go back and take a good look at. I think the best comparable I would have in terms of my Hermes collection to this bucket bag would be my Hermes in the loop bag that I just got. But technically that one doesn't have a crossbody strap so I'd have to like fashion something together. This one just had everything. It would definitely be my first Raffia bag. And as you know, I love filling gaps in my collection. So we'll see. The door remains open to me going back and purchasing this. 2000 is a lot to spend on a whim bag. And for that money, I could have gotten the Louis Vuitton Monoglam Nano Speedy, which I tried on, which I really thought was cute. And I could even get like an Hermes ready to wear sweater or something. I'd love to know what you guys think. If you liked the pictures or if you think I should um, wait on something else, but I don't have a Raffia bag and it's something that I have been thinking about. And if anyone watching also has one of these Brunello Cuccinelli bags, please let us know. I'm so curious how you like it, how you wear it, does it wear well, etc. And let me know if you like this format of me going and taking you to new stores of lesser known brands, trying things on and giving you my initial take. I had a lot of fun doing these try-ons in the name of research, but I might just become a customer in the meantime. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!